I think we have several major findings uh, in this particular study, uh, the first of which was that uh, individuals with mild traumatic brain injury, 50% uh, of those individuals appear to have damage or uh, leakage of materials from the blood into uh, the central nervous system. Um, so I think that was something that was sort of unexpected, that 50% that of individuals with mild traumatic brain injury would in fact have uh, evidence of damage within the nervous system. Um, basically taking that uh, information, we were able to generate a model of traumatic brain injury in mice. Uh, and this led us to understand the dynamics of that particular uh, response. And so we were able to film the underlying immunology and then essentially treat uh, this brain injury response through a novel uh, mechanism. Uh, and so we were able to discover that we can pass compounds transcranially or through the skull bone into the underlying uh, brain tissue and essentially ameliorate that particular response. Uh, so basically this mild uh, model of traumatic brain injury that we generated uh, results in cell death. Uh, the death that we first see is in the lining of the brain or in the meninges. Uh, and then secondary to that we'll see death in the glial limitans, which is this barrier between the meninges and the brain parenchyma. And so there are astrocytes that comprise the glial limitans that form this barrier. And after our uh, injury is induced, we see death of some of these cells. Uh, in response to the injury to the glial limitans, uh, there's a cell population that lives within the brain. And these are essentially called microglia, which is a, a brain resident macrophage. Uh, and they will respond to the trauma that occurs at the glial limitans. So if the astrocytes stay intact, um, they're forming this seal at the glial limitans, microglia will extend processes up and essentially try to seal the gaps in between those individual cells. And you can think of that like caulking. Um, we're essentially trying to seal those spaces such that fluid cannot penetrate down into the brain parenchyma. If an astrocyte actually dies, you'll see it sort of disappear in that space. Microglia will essentially come up and try to fill that hole, uh, forming these giant jellyfish-like structures. And essentially, we think they're trying to plug that hole in the glial limitans so, again, that fluid can't come down. The other thing that they're doing is they're sort of eating the dead material uh, within that space. So essentially they're trying to phagocytose or take up the materials that have died uh, within the glial limitans. Uh, so initially, uh, transcranial dr drug delivery was discovered as an accident. Um, we were just trying to get uh, compounds, uh, fluorescent dyes, into the lining of the brain so that we could see things of interest. Uh, so we began applying small molecular weight compounds to the skull bone, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, they passed right through it. Uh, and so then we started to look at this more closely uh, to figure out if other things could pass through the skull bone. Um, and basically what we were able to discover is that any compound that is less than, say, 40,000 molecular weight was able to penetrate through an intact uh, skull bone. So we can essentially take a compound, place it on the surface of the skull, and just let it pass through via passive diffusion down through into the lining of the brain. And some compounds will even penetrate down into the brain parenchyma or brain tissue itself. Uh, in terms of a therapy, what this allows us to do is apply compounds locally to the site of injury. So if you think of a head injury where you have trauma at a particular region just underneath the skull, rather than put something into the blood supply and have it traffic throughout the periphery, we can set it on the skull bone and have it pass straight through to that area where we need to apply some type of amelioration. Um, and so that's the basic idea is we can apply compounds to therapeutically treat injuries that are localized uh, beneath the skull bone. I'd say one of the caveats is that this has not yet been tested in humans. Uh, thus far, we have uh, looked at the transcranial delivery methodology only in rodents, so mice and rats, and so humans have a thicker skull bone, and so we would need to evaluate uh, whether the same technique could apply to the human skull bone.